Hey, anime fans. Welcome to Anime Stark. Ever wondered what would happen if Deku's small mistake changed his entire life? Well, you're in for a treat. Join me in exploring this what if scenario in Deku's mistake, a life of love and light. This is part one, so let's dive in and see how it all unfolds. A new day at the prestigious UA Academy, quite a pleasant day where students strive to be better every day, or at least most of them. Ida, does anyone know where Midoriya is? The class president spoke as there was little time before classes started, and his friend was missing. Suyu, maybe he overslept, it was unusual for their green-haired classmate not to be there on a day when homework was due. Saro, hey Todoroki, do you know what happened? The two-tone student tensed but didn't show it. Shoto, he said he had to deal with a problem and wouldn't be here for a while, the class was left wondering what happened, but there was no time to ask as their teacher entered the room. Aizawa, alright, now that everyone is in their seats, let's begin, the teacher sat at his desk ready to see what his students had done. Uraka, Sensei, Midoriya kun is missing, the brunette said, and the teacher looked at the empty space. Aizawa, Midoriya asked for permission to be absent for a couple of weeks. The director refused to give me more information, and someone else was assigned to turn in his homework. Todoroki raised his hand, all right, I guess you have it, the two-tone student nodded, when it's Midoriya's turn, I'll let you know. They started a long session of presentations on various topics chosen by the students themselves. Some were amazing, others were too silly even to consider a good grade. Mineta, and that's why outer underwear is the best garment for hero outfits, the class fell silent, and Eraser didn't know whether to laugh or cry, but it was clear he had managed to get a good grade. Aizawa, all right, Todoroki, now Midoriya's presentation, he pressed a button on a control he had, and a projector descended from the ceiling, and the windows polarized. Shoto, here, he gave the USB to his teacher and went to sit while the teacher connected the device. Aizawa, all right, which one is it? There were various files in front of the class, and it was hard to tell which one was the correct one, what did Midoriya choose? Ida, he was going to talk about the pillars, everything related to them and how they defend Japan from incredibly strong and dangerous threats, Eraser found a folder with the same name and opened it, making three of his students tense. Kirishima, hey sensei, that's not the USB, the teacher noticed the stiffness in his student and found it curious, Toto bro must have confused it. Aizawa, is that true, Todoroki? He turned to his two-tone student, who was also tense. Shoto, yes, it was my mistake, sensei, the nervous tone was odd, if you give it back, I can bring the other one immediately. Aizawa, is there something I should know about this USB, he didn't say anything, it was an alert, the device said something, if you don't mind, I'll put one, Kirishima, Todoroki, and Bakugo rushed to stop him, unsuccessfully, as the eraser hero tied them up in his capture weapon. Momo, guys, are you okay? You're acting strange, the vice president was worried about her classmates, who were panicking. Kirishima, us, acting strange? You're the strange one, Yaoyorozu, we're normal, the scared tone showed otherwise. Aizawa, enough, pay attention, I'll consider this for Midoriya's grade, the three turned as best they could to the screen, all showing interest. In the video, a beautiful garden with water paths passing through channels near various flowers could be seen. Three shadows moved at breakneck speeds, sparks flying between them, a speed battle that culminated in two figures, a man and a woman, holding swords at Midoriya's neck, who looked tired. Voice, that's enough, a voice was heard, but it wasn't clear who it was, Izuku, stop holding back, Giyu, more strength, Mitsuri, stop being so soft on Izuku. Giyu, I'll try harder, Yurokodaki-san, he bowed to a man with a Tengu mask who stood before the three. Mitsuri, sorry, it's tough for me to hit Izuku-kun, she blushed a bit under the freckled boy's tender gaze. Yurokodaki, and what's your excuse, boy? Izuku, sorry, I'll put more effort and dedication into training from now on, he also bowed, and the teacher seemed pleased. Yurokodaki, alright, I hope to see improvement in the future, for now, that's all, the three relaxed, and the pink-haired girl charged at the freckled boy, who caught her. Mitsuri, Izuku-kun is mean, she pouted cutely in a sign of anger. Insert Mike's voice. Mitsuri Kanroji. Quirk, angelic flexibility, Mitsuri can bend into impossible positions for a normal human. If she exceeds her limit, she experiences nausea. Izuku, sorry, but if I use all my power, things won't end well, he scratched his cheek, a little embarrassed. Mitsuri, well, just because of that, you'll buy me anything I ask for, 
she freed herself from the strong grip of the freckled boy, who smiled calmly. Izuku, of course, Giyu, do you want anything? The black-haired man looked at him and shook his head before leaving, and with that attitude, it's no wonder Shinobu-san rejected him. Giyu stayed in place for a moment. Giyu, you're not funny, Midoriya, he continued walking without saying another word, ending the video. Outside the video, reactions varied. Some were surprised to see their classmate withstand the attack of not just one but two pillars. His female classmates were interested in him, wanting to know the relationship between those two, and Mineta, well. Mineta, Midoriya is with that sexy pillar, he drooled a lot while imagining the pink-haired girl, and then Suyu's tongue flick knocked him out. Suyu, disgusting, ribbit. Aizawa, I want an explanation now, he tightened his scarf, and the three felt like they were losing their breath, why does Midoriya know the pillars? No ordinary hero, let alone a student, can even get close. Kirishima, I don't know, I swear, he activated his quirk to make it harder to squeeze his body. Shoto, Izuku didn't say anything about that, the two-toned student was close to turning blue. Katsuki, yeah, he's right, the ash blonde was almost passed out. Aizawa, I don't believe you, he released his grip, and the three finally breathed, explain what you know. Kirishima, sorry, Aizawa sensei but we promised Izu bro that we wouldn't say anything, the other two were still catching their breath, but they supported him. Mina, would you do it for a Scooby snack? She showed a box of cookies that Kirishima liked. Kirishima, well, you see, they, he couldn't continue because Shoto froze his mouth, hmm. Katsuki, shut up, shitty hair, you were about to kill us, the red-haired boy looked annoyed at his friend, who was desperately trying to get rid of the ice, we won't sell out the walking lettuce, he defiantly looked at his teacher, who accepted the challenge. Aizawa, all right, if you tell me what's going on, you won't have homework for three months, the classroom fell silent, waiting for the response. Shoto, same folder, video 53, everyone looked incredulous as the two-toned student had betrayed his friend. Katsuki, Judas wasn't even that treacherous, he was about to sit down but was stopped by his teacher, leaving the three on the floor. Aizawa, well, let's start he selected the video, and they waited for the beginning. In the video, the freckled boy could be seen on a missile in the middle of a green field, and it didn't seem like a good idea. Izuku, are you sure about this, Lloyd? The freckled boy looked nervously at a blonde who was serious, staring at the green-haired boy. Lloyd, I understand you have doubts, Izuku, but it's for the good of the world, he actually just wanted to make the freckled boy suffer a little. Lloyd, I understand you have doubts, Izuku, but it's for the good of the world, he actually just wanted to make the freckled boy suffer a little. Insert Mike's voice. Your Briar. Quirk, extreme stealth, Your can infiltrate anywhere she wants, becoming invisible to everyone's sight. It is still unknown how it works. Your, I hope so after this, Izuku-kun and I have something to do, and it's better that nothing happens to him, she threw a knife from who knows where and cut the man's cheek. Lloyd, ready, Izuku? With fear, he approached the freckled boy, who was prepared for this. Izuku, more than ready, he clung to the missile, and the blonde shot, ah, it was the last thing heard before the missile exploded, making the blonde fearful by the look of the raven-haired girl. Your, is it completely safe, right? She kept smiling, and the blonde felt like he had to run. Izuku, that was fun, he fell smoking and shirtless, providing a very good view for Yor and the girls interested in the broccoli, Your chan it's not necessary to act extremely, I'm fine. It's not the first time a missile has exploded on me. Even Senku makes worse explosions, your approach to hug him. Eraser rushed to the principal's office, what had just happened was unusual, and he didn't know what to make of Midoriya. Besides knowing the pillars, he was also associated with a strange person who had access to missiles, and there was that woman who pulled out knives from who knows where. Nezu, come in, the principal spoke, and the raven-haired man entered the office, which looked as clean as ever, and the director as manic as always. Can I help you with something, Aizawa? The rat in a suit spoke, and the raven-haired man sat in front of him. Aizawa, there was a discovery in the middle of the class, the director saw him excited, a bad sign. Nezu, what kind of discovery? His fur bristled that the new riddle eraser would provide. Aizawa, Midoriya Izuku, with that, Nezu knew everything, anything related to Izuku was an enigma he would love to solve. It was discovered, thanks to a USB in my possession related to the pillars, and it had contact with people of dubious origin. Nezu, ah, yes, regarding the pillars, young Midoriya has been strict about who can know this information, so you are not notified. 
the racer's annoyed face only promised trouble. And about the unknown people, can you describe them? Izawa, a man and a woman, the man is blonde, and the woman has black hair. Both, the director raised his paw to stop him, he already knew who they were. Nezu, there's no need to worry, they are friends of young Midoriya. I personally know them and can say that they won't do anything that could harm Midoriya severely. He smiled at Eraser, who was tired of the situation. Izawa, there's something about all this that I don't like, he was honest with the director, from whom he hoped to get answers. Nezu, that's because of your lack of information. Young Midoriya has many secrets, and the fewer people who know, the easier it is to protect everyone. He said and took the USB eraser left on his desk. Maybe this will help you and your class understand him better. Izawa, you just contradicted yourself, director, Nezu's smiling face only showed that the teacher was mistaken. Didn't you say that the fewer people know, the better? An entire class is not exactly a small number of people. Nezu, I know, but I emphasize that the fewer people know, the easier it is to protect them. If students turned heroes know about it, it only increases the amount of protection for people. He smiled at Eraser's resigned face. I warn you that if you plan to view the contents of this device, do it with Midoriya's consent. Izawa, sure, he took his phone and called his student, he was tired and didn't want to postpone what he could do now. Izuku, yes, sensei? What's happening? He sounded a bit tired, and it was evident he was hiding something. Is it about my assignment? Because if it is, what did I do wrong? Izawa, no, Midoriya, it's not about your assignment, but it's something important, a strange sound came from the other side, and the teacher doubted if his student was okay. Todoroki confused the USB and handed over another one. Izuku, W which USB, the freckled boy prayed to every possible deity that it wasn't the one he thought. Izawa, the one containing a video of you training with a pillar and exploding with a missile, Izuku's soul left his body with the information. Izuku, I'd like to explain everything, but I'm in a bit of a problem right now, a beastly sound came from the other side, and Izawa wondered what was happening. There are some videos in the memory that can explain it. Kachan, Kirishima, and Shoto know which ones. I have to go, goodbye, sensei, the call ended, and the professional hero sighed. Nezu, so, what will you do? The director saw the tired teacher pondering the situation. Izawa, since he gave us permission to view the contents of the USB, and my students know which one to watch, I don't see why not. The Chimera smiled pleased with the outcome and nodded to Izawa. If you'll excuse me, he left for his classroom, there was a lot to see. Nezu, and Izawa, the raven-haired man looked over his shoulder at the smiling director. If there's anything you need an explanation for, don't hesitate to ask, the teacher nodded, finally leaving the office. He walked straight to his classroom, now they just had to watch the explanations or let his own students explain what happened first. Izawa, all right, the raven-haired man opened the door and saw his students hanging Bakugo, Kirishima, and Todoroki with tape over a vat of acid. What's going on here? He demanded using his quirk, and the class A fell silent. Toru, it was Mina's idea, she pointed to her pink friend, who felt betrayed. Mina, you're cruel, Toru-chan. You also want to know what's going on with Midori-kun, she accused the invisible girl, who shivered a bit. Izawa, I don't care who started it. Everyone will clean up the mess and pay attention, Class A did what they were told, and soon the classroom was ready for whatever the sensei had to say. Well, I've talked to the principal and Midoriya. To clarify the matter, we will watch more videos from the USB. According to Midoriya, you three know which one to choose, am I wrong? The trio of idiots nodded. Well, now choose. They looked at each other unsure of what to do or which one to choose, so they let Katsuki decide, he had known him the longest. Katsuki, Aha, I finally found it, he smiled at everyone who looked confused at the blonde. Izawa, what are we going to watch? The teacher asked for everyone, Katsuki's smile didn't fade. Katsuki, we'll see the beginning of this, he clicked on file number one. In the video. It was a beautiful day, and a four-year-old Izuku stood in front of the camera completely happy, his ear-to-ear -ear smile gave it away. Izuku, well, this will be the record of every adventure I live with my friends, it will be entertaining to watch. He moved the camera and focused on a little Katsuki who was staring at the wall, expecting something. Did you catch it, Kachan? Katsuki, not yet, it's elusive, he squinted his eyes, focusing on any movement. Tanjiro, what is Kachan doing? A red-haired boy and his sister entered the room, watching Katsuki capturing something. Tanji. 
Ro, what is Kachan doing? A red-haired boy and his sister enter the room, watching Katsuki capturing something. Gamaboko Gampachi, Kamato Tanjiro. Quirk, Stonehead, his head is as hard as splitting stones. Izuku, we're trying to catch a mouse, he said with joy. Nezuko, a mouse? She hid behind her brother, she didn't like mice. Izuku, yes, there's one on the wall, and we want to see it. Don't worry, Nezuko-chan, I'll protect you, he promised the girl with stars in her eyes. Tanjiro, we both protect you, Nezuko, affirmed her brother, and the girl smiled. Katsuki, I caught it, he affirmed and pulled something from the wall. Are you sure it's a mouse? Izuku, it moved too fast to see, he admitted, embarrassed for confusing animals. What is it? Katsuki, this, he showed a very curious animal. Nezuko, how cute, she quickly took the strange creature, which looked at her with a smile. Hello, little friend. Tanjiro, wait, Nezuko, we don't know if it's dangerous, he approached to take the little creature, which only looked curiously at Tanjiro. Katsuki, it's a slug, do you think it's dangerous? The blonde retorted to the redhead, who thought. Tanjiro, no, but, a calming sound began to play, and when looking at the animal, it was singing. It's. Weird. It made me sleepy, he collapsed on the floor. Katsuki, yeah. To me. Two, the blonde was the next to fall. Nezuko, Izuku-chan, I'm also sleepy, she lay down still holding the little one, and the freckled boy watched the scene. Izuku, me too, the freckled boy dropped the camera, filming how the green-haired boy fell asleep next to Nezuko. Mina watched each video one by one, unable to decide. In some, Midoriya was small, in others, he was bigger, and in some, he looked just as she knew him. She searched for a while until she found something that caught her curiosity. Mina, what's this? File 76 Katsuki smiled, and his two friends felt confused, they didn't know what had happened that day. In the video, a laboratory appeared in the middle of a large plane, surrounded by many things. There were failed and successful experiments. Izuku came out of the house, dragging a heavy-looking canvas as if it were nothing. Izuku, are you sure this will work? He asked a boy with onion-like hair. Senku, pretty sure, a billion percent sure, said the scientist. In the video, Izuku dragged a heavy canvas from the laboratory, showing a place filled with experiments. He asked Senku, a scientist with the Quirk Encyclopedia, about their plan. Asta, with the Quirk Liba, appeared unharmed after being propelled by a pelican. Senku, how many fingers do you see? Senku approached, showing his hand. Asta, seven, he shouted joyfully, receiving a light smack from Senku, oh, it's five. Senku left to prepare the final part of his project, while Izuku discussed their plan to explode part of the Gremory territory with Asta and the others. The reason was to help Ochako's parents, who had a construction company, by showcasing their abilities. Asta, are you crazy? Aren't you close to the Gremory? Asta exclaimed, and Izuku explained their plan to support Ochako's family. End of the video, Uraka cried tears of happiness as she learned that her parents' construction business flourished due to a contract with the Gremory family. Mina, Midori-kun is amazing, right, Ochako-chan? Mina and her friends rejoiced for Ochako. Aizawa, so, you're the cool friends Asta talks about? The class fell silent as Aizawa revealed he knew the mysterious boy. Toru, sensei, who is he talking about? The whole class was puzzled. Aizawa, the kid who appeared out of nowhere is my cousin's adopted son. I'll leave it at that. The classroom remained silent as they processed their teacher's revelation. Aizawa, anyway, please put something relevant, we don't have all day. The three friends closest to Asta looked at each other before starting a rock-paper-scissors game to decide. Kirishima, I won, joyfully, he approached the monitor to make his choice. Shoto, you'll pick his favorite, right? He said to the blonde beside him. Katsuki, he doesn't know any other video, damn it. Quite tired of that video, they sighed heavily. Kirishima, I found it, happily, he chose file number 20. In the video, it was a dark and stormy night where Katsuki, Kirishima, Shoto, and Izuku were somewhere in the world, running as if their lives depended on it, which it did. Katsuki, how much range does that damn thing have? He looked over his companions, and a bullet grazed his cheek. Izuku, if I'm not mistaken, it's three kilometers. Shoto sweated at that, those bullets easily pierced his ice and even managed to damage Kirishima using his quirk and Izuku, who is more resistant. Shoto, I still don't know why she's so angry. He asked the air, 
causing Katsuki to tense. Kirishima, Baku bro, it was your fault, you got involved where you shouldn't have. Asta laughed at that, and the blonde just glared at him. Shoto, what did you do now, idiot? The two colored hair wasn't one to get agitated, but this was getting out of control, mainly because the bullets were now coming out of strange portals. Izuku, calm them down. Izuku, no, this is fun. The freckled one was smiling, dodging every bullet aimed at him. Katsuki, stop them before they kill us, the blonde dodged two bullets aimed at his crotch, narrowly avoiding losing his future descendants. Izuku, they'll kill you, Shoto for not stopping, and Kirishima for helping. A bullet hit him in the head, and the freckled one hit the ground, startling his companions. Kirishima, Izu bro, the red-haired one went to help his friend when he, too, received two bullets. The other two didn't hesitate, they sensibly ran away from the scene just as two shadows were approaching. End of the video, Kirishima embarrassedly admitted that it wasn't the right one. Toru, are you guys okay? Their invisible classmate spoke, concerned about the four, especially the redhead. Kirishima, it wasn't as tough as you think, the bullets felt like All Might's punches, but I could easily endure them. Aizawa, who was attacking you? The bullets hinted at who it could be, but he wouldn't jump to conclusions. Katsuki, it's in some video, pick wisely, damn it, he hit Kirishima's thick head, who barely felt it. Choose well, idiot. Kirishima, sorry, he searched among the videos until he finally found the one he wanted. This is it. In the video, Shoto, Katsuki, and Kirishima were facing a very serious Izuku. The three were in a helicopter, and the freckled one was quite tense. Kirishima, repeat once more what we're supposed to do? He was so nervous about what would happen that he kept forgetting the plan. Katsuki, idiot. Izuku, let him be, Kachan. He said forcefully, surprising the class. Remember, Kirishima, we're here by orders of the Russian government. There's knowledge of a terrorist cell experimenting with humans and machines, creating both androids and cyborgs to sell to the highest bidder or attack cities. The mission is to stop them when entering their base here in Siberia. Your duty is to distract with Kachan while Inverno and I enter. Kirishima, I understand, he clenched his fist, showing red lightning. Senku, attention, your captain is speaking, it's time. The helicopter door was opened, revealing a great drop. You know what to do. The four jumped into the void. Katsuki started throwing explosions to stabilize himself, Shoto released small flames to fall faster, Kirishima faced forward with his quirk activated, and Izuku relaxed, letting the wind carry him. Katsuki, no need to show off, idiot, he yelled at the freckled one, who was spinning around like a meteor. Katsuki and Kirishima landed on a turret that instantly collapsed when the redhead fell on it, drawing the attention of the complex, who began to attack the two heroes. Unbeknownst to them, Shoto and Izuku had fallen into trees a few meters away from their companions and stealthily made their way to the giant building in the middle of nowhere. They entered through the ventilation on one side and crawled inside, identifying the central power source while Katsuki and Kirishima thinned their ranks. Izuku, Phase 1 in action. The freckled one tore down a wall leading to the energy center, examining its core. What do you think, Shoto? Shoto, it's thermal, absorbs cold and converts it into heat. I have an idea. The two colored hair launched a burst of flames, overloading the mechanism and frying the circuits, plunging everything into darkness. And now? Izuku, go to the escape route and secure it, I'll take care of blowing up this place. The two-toned one nodded and slid over his ice while the freckled one disappeared into the hallways. He moved quickly through the lower levels of the complex, injuring anyone in his way. Finally, he reached the bases where heavily armed individuals stood. However, their weapons were useless against the freckled one's resilient skin, and every bullet only damaged his shirt and vest. A few minutes later, almost everyone in the room was defeated, leaving only one who looked terrified at the green-haired approaching him. Person, what are you? He held a gun, trembling in fear. Izuku, just a simple guy who wants to free those trapped here. He smiled just as the ceiling broke, and Kirishima fell with red lightning in his unbreakable mode, landing on the guy. You just stole my moment. Kirishima, sorry, Izu bro, but it was Baku bro's fault. He threw me with strength he he. The freckled one sighed and helped his friend up. Is it time to go? Izuku, something like that. First, we have to get everyone out, and then blow everything up. The redhead and the freckled one quickly checked each floor in that place, and after two hours, shown in fast forward on the camera, everyone was out. Katsuki, my turn. With a maniacal smile, 
he used his explosions on an external pillar, and soon, everything collapsed along with all the connections, leaving the place in ruins. And done, a stone hit his head just as someone exited the area, looking very scared and hyperventilating. End of the video, the classroom fell silent, not quite understanding what had just happened. Their classmates were in a frozen place with many enemies, and then there was her. Mineta, who's that girl? He drooled a bit, staring at such a scene, and was met with a punch from Katsuki that put him to sleep. Katsuki, what do you care, damn midget? Aizawa, what did you guys do? He didn't like that his students were involved in international troubles, it could cause trouble. Shoto, a contact of Izuku called us for help. Since we're not licensed heroes, we can act unofficially. The heterochromatic one spoke sincerely, surprising everyone. Momo, and the girl at the end? Kirishima, we won't say, better see it for yourselves. He smiled at his classmates, and they were about to say something, but the bell rang. Aizawa, well, this is over for today. I'll keep this. The teacher took the USB from Kirishima's hands, who nodded nervously. We'll see it another time. And with that, the class left with more questions than answers. The 3A class left with many questions, few answers. They thought they knew their classmates, but that wasn't the case. They've experienced more adventures than they let on and know people of renown they didn't realize they knew. Uraka, Yamomo? The dark-haired girl looked at her friends in the room, lost in thought. Are you okay? Momo, huh? Yeah, just, she thought twice before speaking. The Gremory family. It's strange that Izuku knows them, and according to that guy, they're very good friends. Mina, so, Izuku, huh? She teased her blushing friend. Momo, ahem. She fake coughed, trying to shake off the embarrassment. The Gremory family is very private and rarely associates with anyone. Even my dad had difficulties making deals with them. Kaminari, if it's so hard, how does Midoriya have contact with them? He said, munching on candies hidden from Mina. Mina, Kaminari, the cold tone surprised everyone. Are those my sweets? Kaminari, he he, he ran like there was no tomorrow, escaping from an angry Mina. Mina, you won't escape. Izuku was the only one who knew where they were, she shouted, drawing everyone's attention. Momo, so, Izuku, huh? The dark-haired girl countered causing the pink-haired girl to turn violet. Suyu, Uraka-chan is closest to him, maybe she knows something, Ribbit. The others looked at the brunette, who blushed. Uraka, Midoriya kun has never told me anything, she hurried to say. Saro, I guess they're in some video, he looked around the room in the dorms and didn't see the three involved. Where are those three? Momo, they've hidden to avoid talking until this afternoon when we'll watch the videos, but this time the principal will be present. She sighed defeated. Those three were really good at hiding. Mina, I still don't understand why hide so much information? She pouted, frustrated that her best friend hadn't told her anything. Nezu, to protect certain people in those videos. The director, accompanied by Eraser, entered the dorms, causing general panic. Momo, protect? From what? This was becoming curious, and they needed answers. Nezu, that will probably be clear today. He jumped onto the table in the room, and everyone looked at him. I know you have many questions, just like me. That's why, now that I have time, I'll accompany you to watch some videos of young Midoriya. Ida, we are honored by this, director. The always upright Ida said proudly. Aizawa, if you're done, prepare the room. The teacher entered with an annoyed expression. There were still many questions and few answers. With great speed, the 3A students cleaned the room and were ready to see more from the USB. They were all gathered and prepared for whatever Katsuki would put on the big screen. Katsuki, well, I don't remember which one it was, everyone fell backward, it had been 10 minutes since the blonde searched among so many videos without finding what he was looking for. Shoto, which one is it? He approached to search with the blonde, who whispered what he wanted. Shoto then changed the folder to Force 2, which seemed strange to them. This one. Katsuki, that damn bastard moved it. He muttered angrily. Mina, what are we going to watch? She pushed the pink-haired girl, and the video started. Grace and Misfortune, Izuku X Harem, Temporary Title, by Cesaru Senpai. In the video. One rainy afternoon in Tokyo a couple of months ago, Izuku, Kirishima, and Tanjiro were seen. The three were quite tense about what was about to happen. Kirishima, it's here. He lightly hit, revealing it was hollow. How do we get in? An idea sparked in the freckled boy's mind. Izuku, 
Use our heads. He grinned maliciously at Tanjiro, who was searching for something to open with. Tanjiro, huh? His friend's look didn't please him. A sudden cut, and suddenly, it showed Izuku and Kirishima holding Tanjiro, ready to pierce the wall. Tanjiro, but not my head, with a war cry, the three broke through the wall into very dark facilities. That wasn't necessary, angrily, Tanjiro complained to the freckled one, who just looked up. Izuku, how about a race? Ignoring Tanjiro, he excitedly suggested to Kirishima. Kirishima, I'm in, lightning surrounded his body while Tanjiro sighed. Tanjiro, fine. With a jump, he was ready. What does the winner get? Izuku, if Kirishima wins, we'll tell him what we have prepared for his power problem. This confused the class, what did that mean? Tanjiro, and me? Eager to win, he asked. Izuku, we'll help you with Kanao and prevent Shinobu-san from poisoning your eggs. He smiled at his friend, who blushed. Tanjiro, sounds good, the stubborn one admitted, a great prize. Kirishima, and you, Izubro? What do you want for winning? The freckled one showed a sly smile, giving an uneasy feeling. Izuku, when I win, you'll help me with something I have planned for Nehire chan Both gulped audibly, whenever it involved one of the girls, Izuku went to the extreme, very extreme. That said, on your marks, both prepared. Ready? A strange sound came from Tanjiro's mouth. Go. After that, a red lightning bolt followed by a very agile Tanjiro climbed the thousands of stairs, leaving Izuku behind, watching them go higher and higher, almost getting lost in the stairs. Izuku, well, that was enough of an advantage. He leaned forward, letting energy flow through his feet, this would be epic to do. I'll win this. Suddenly, Izuku disappeared, leaving only a crater where he had been, ascending at vertiginous speeds, surpassing both contenders in less than two seconds. They watched as a green meteor passed, sweeping away everything in its path, and soon reached the top floor where the others were coming from. Izuku, my grandma is faster than you two idiots, he shouted to the distance, and only an exasperated sound was heard. Come on, turtles, time is of the essence. A moment later, Tanjiro was the first to reach the top, taking advantage of the broken stairs by jumping. Kirishima, on the other hand, just destroyed everything in his path until he arrived with a face of total defeat. Kirishima, I lost, he comically cried, making Izuku laugh. Tanjiro, you're not the only one, Kirishima-kun. He consoled the redhead while Izuku just looked down the hallway, yep, there were a lot of turrets. Izuku, oh, by the way, we'll help you with your dream girl too, Tanjiro, so don't lament. The sound of a weapon firing at his position made him close the door. And we'll help you too, Kirishima. Tanjiro, so, all of this, he blanked out, as did Kirishima. Izuku, yes, I did it because I wanted a race. He smiled at his friends, who were chanting charcoal broccoli. I'll go first, alright? The looks from his friends only confirmed it. Very well, just stay alert. The freckled one opened the door, and instantly a hail of bullets hit him without injuring his skin. His shirt and pants, on the other hand, were shredded, providing a good view to those interested in Izuku. The other two stood behind him, with Kirishima in front of Tanjiro, his quirk active just in case Izuku couldn't stop himself, and they abruptly reached the other side of the hallway in front of a metal door. This time, Kirishima tore the door apart, revealing a room with a glass tank containing someone. Tanjiro, that's her. Surprised, he looked at the occupant and how Izuku clenched his fists, almost drawing blood. Kirishima, how did they capture her? It sounded a bit impossible given who she was, but it happened. Izuku, I don't know, but when I find out who did it, they're going to the moon and back. With a punch, he shattered the glass, and the occupant fell unconscious into Izuku's arms. Now you're safe. Midoriya power. Midoriya power. Bloody demon quirk can change blood to create whatever she wants. End of the video. The class fell silent seeing what seemed to be a rescue mission for that very strange horned girl. The director seemed very pleased. Now, they understood the reason for the freckled guy's sudden request to skip classes. Mina asked excitedly, disguising her jealousy, who is she? Shoto slash Katsuki slash Kirishima replied, power, trembling at the memory of the bloodthirsty girl. Kaminari asked, are you guys okay? The three snapped back to reality. Katsuki said, yeah, just that she gives me the creeps. The class looked at him strangely. Was she really that intense? Aizawa dismissed it, saying, anyway, let's continue watching. He switched to a folder with the letter N. What's this? The trio looked in fear as the teacher clicked on the first video. 
Shoto exclaimed, Sensei, no. But it was too late, the video started. In the video. A beautiful day in New York, a lovely apartment in one of the best buildings. Surprise! The freckled guy was peacefully sleeping, causing warmth among those interested. Izuku woke up lazily, following the sweet smell to find a delicious breakfast waiting. Is it good? The girl smiled from the doorway. Senpai Hatone Hire, speculated to be his girlfriend, appeared, smiling at the freckled guy, who nodded and kissed her, confirming Mina's suspicions. Izuku said, It's perfect, thanks, Nehire Chan. The blue haired girl smiled and sent a wave to the camera, ending the video. End of the video. Mineta was practically crying blood, he was supposed to be with the sexy senpai, but Broccoli beat him to it. Momo said bitterly, So it's true. I officially have no chance with my secret love. Ochako forced a smile, clearly hiding her true feelings, almost making Katsuki laugh. If only they knew the truth. Mina said cheerfully, Who would have thought, Midori kun and senpai? Her happy tone concealed her sadness just like her friends. Shoto whispered to Kirishima, what do you think they'll say when they find out? Kirishima shrugged. Kyoka, with a questioning look, asked, find out about what? Her gaze demanded an answer, causing fear in both. Kirishima said, hey, look at this video, it's about to start. He pressed the key, and everything began. In the video. A very clean and perfectly decorated Victorian era room, with only a five-year-old freckled boy in it, looking for something in panic. He seemed to find it when he looked at the chandelier on the ceiling. Izuku said, this will work, and jumped up, trying to hide, confusing everyone who didn't know what was happening. After a while, two girls entered the grand hall, one redhead and the other with black hair, both seemingly searching for something. Izu Tan. The black-haired girl shouted, and viewers could hear the mini freckled guy trying to hold back his laughter. This isn't funny. The redhead shouted in desperation. She didn't like it when her green-haired friend did this. If you don't come out right now, I'm going to cry. She added with a fake tear, scaring the freckled boy. I'm here, Rias Chan, he said, hanging from the chandelier like a monkey. He he. Rias scolded him, silly Izu Tan. The redhead shouted, still with a tear on her cheek. It's fun to play hide and seek, right, Akeno Chan? The black haired girl ignored him. Fool, she murmured, but the freckled boy heard her. You too, he lamented, and the screen went dark. End of the video. Questions arose about who the girls with their friend were, and for some girls, potential love interests. Of course, the trio refused to say anything. Momo said, Rias. The name sounded familiar, and when she finally remembered, the surprise was evident. Bakugo-san. Her calmly cold tone made the blonde guy sweat a bit. Was that Rias Gremory? Katsuki snorted, I'm not surprised the ponytail figured it out. Kaminari asked with curiosity, Rias Gremory? It didn't ring a bell for him. Kyoka teased her ex, saying, from the family that helped Ochako, battery brain. She mocked him, and he just shrunk in his place. Kaminari muttered, the insult wasn't necessary, receiving a look of total anger. Katsuki added with a touch of melancholy, yes, Rias is a childhood friend, he sighed, Broccoli spent entire weeks with the redhead and the lightning weirdo. I can't say more without the idiot present. Nezu said, this is interesting. The director smiled too much for Aizawa's liking, who analyzed each video. For now, it's better if you all go to sleep, the director suggested, and the class president declared the day over. A new day had arrived, bringing excitement about finding out what's happening with their friend. It was interesting to learn more about their friend's daily life, and today they would discover more. Aizawa, are you ready? His students nodded. It was time to watch more videos after their day's training and surviving endless math and history classes. Mina, Wait a minute, the pink-haired girl brought out a bowl of food and quickly distributed it to everyone, now, yes. Shoto, alright, this time I'll choose. He looked through various folders until he found something he didn't remember, hey. What's this? Kirishima, I don't know. He scratched his head. That video was like others in the many folders, and there was nothing special about it. Katsuki, oh, yeah, that, everyone waited for an explanation they didn't get, I have no idea. Without waiting, he clicked on the video. In the video. One calm afternoon, Izuku stood in front of a very ordinary house, which was open. Izuku, okay, this is not normal. He murmured and opened the door, finding no one inside, well, it doesn't look like they broke in, maybe they left the door open? He went in to check, I believe the lady could do that. A sound came from upstairs, 
So the green-haired guy quickly went up to the noise and entered the room it came from, what are you doing? Something stirred in the mess, and he approached. Izuku, okay, this is not normal. He murmured and opened the door, finding no one inside, well, it doesn't look like they broke in, maybe they left the door open? He went in to check, I believe the lady could do that. A sound came from upstairs, so the green-haired guy quickly went up to the noise and entered the room it came from, what are you doing? Something stirred in the mess, and he approached. Komi Shuko. Quirk, cat tenderness, anyone in her presence completely loses the will to fight. Komi, nervously, she searched through the mess without finding what she was looking for dash, with a tear in her eye, she tried to find what she needed. Izuku, Shuko-chan, what are you looking for? The girl looked at him and wrote in the air, I understand. Without even searching, he opened a drawer and took out the notebook she was looking for, is this what you're looking for? Komi, with stars in her eyes, she took the notebook and hurriedly wrote, thank you, Midori Yakun. Izuku, it's nothing, Shuko-chan, I'm here to help. He patted her head, and the girl just let him, so, what do you need? Komi, with excitement, she wrote and showed it to the green-haired guy, I want to go to the aquarium, but I have no one to go with. Izuku, all right, then let's go. He said with a smile, and the girl nodded to quickly get ready. End of the video. Kirishima, oh, that's why we didn't know. He felt like a fool for not figuring out what the video was about. Suyu, who was the one with Midoriya Chan? She asked, causing a silly smile in the three, are you guys okay? Ribbit. Shoto, yes, that girl was too sweet and innocent for anyone. Mineta, yeah, who was that? Before finishing, the short guy felt pure hatred directed at him, and when he turned, he saw three of the four horsemen of the apocalypse glaring at him, that adorable girl. Kirishima, it's Komi-san. He said in an enamored tone. Toru, it's obvious that you like her a lot, Kirishima-kun. She said with obvious jealousy, making the redhead tremble and the pink-haired girl beside him curious. Kirishima, it's just that Komi-san makes you feel calm about everything around you. He explained, which didn't seem to calm the invisible girl. Katsuki, save your love story for later, the blonde shouted, causing a blush in both, just play it already, half and half. Shoto, fine. Unaware of everything, he started another video. Aizawa, what did you put? The two idiots just smiled, a bad sign. In the video. Back at the lab cabin where Senku conducted experiments on everything, this time was no different, as Izuku was thrown into the sky by a single explosion. Shoto, will he be okay? Senku and Akirishima connected with strange nodes were by his side, all three looking at the sky. Senku, if he survived the ocean floor and the vacuum of space, I doubt a one-for-all explosion can harm him. He replied simply, dragging Kirishima back inside by the ear, come on, we still need to figure out how to keep you from dying before you turn 20. With that information, the class was surprised, and they looked at the serious redhead. Shoto, will this work? He entered, followed by the camera. Inside, it was a technological center in all its splendor, and in the center was an elevator that led down to more things. Senku, it's necessary to understand how this unique power works in all its glory. We can't settle for what Gran Torino and All Might discovered about the holders. With a couple of clicks, the nodes on Kirishima's body lit up, how does the power itself work? Is it only to enhance a quirk? If so, why consume the tenant's own quirk to survive? Why does Kirishima, aside from making him harder than diamond and tungsten, give him superhuman strength? If we solve these questions, we'll have a path to follow to deal with this. With a button, an electric discharge ran through Kirishima's body, how do you feel, cardboard brain? Kirishima, just a slight tingle in the muscles, nothing more. The spiky-haired guy thought for a moment before sighing. Senku, this is not leading anywhere. We need you to unleash 100% to provide conclusive evidence. With a few commands, Kirishima was showered with electricity much more than Kaminari could generate. Shoto, are you sure he's okay? Senku ignored him in favor of the red lightning that Kirishima was emitting. Senku, all right. Suddenly, everything stopped, this is interesting. Kirishima, in, in truth? He felt like he was in a blender, and his brain short-circuited, it feels weird. Senku, it's normal after being electrocuted to such an extent, but it revealed interesting things. He looked at the table where the discharge was and the reaction he got, as we suspected, it's not electricity that comes out of you, or not entirely. Kirishima, th then? He slowly regained feeling in his jaw and arms. 
Senku, just like broccoli believed, one for all strengthens every cell in your body, filling each one with an extreme amount of power. You're lucky to have the quirk you have because it's more than likely you would explode from so much power. Kirishima, but where does it come from? He tried to get up without success, he still felt numb. Senku, you mentioned a core, right? The redhead nodded, it must be from there. For now, we've only confirmed that one for all reacts extremely to energy and that your quirk is a kind of resistance that prevents your death. Shoto, do we have an idea of how to prevent? You know. Senku, prevent him from dying? The bicolor nodded, for now, I have an idea, and I don't know if it will work. Kirishima, what is it? He said exhausted, the effect of the electric shock was strange. Senku, we'll put a regulator where you use Ofa the most. This will divert and contain the energy. From what I see, it needs to contain a lot. Izuku, that's only temporary. The freckled guy entered panting and smoking. Senku, how far did it send you this time? He asked, and the freckled guy breathed heavily before looking at the three. Izuku, I almost reached Tokyo, a new record. The bicolor cursed under his breath, Kirishima had taken the first place in the broccoli toss, thinking about it, and with the air from here, I think I have a better idea of how to help Kirishima. Senku, go ahead, I'm all ears. With a pen and a notebook, he paid close attention. Izuku, as All Might explained, one for all strengthens and amplifies existing quirks. And as we know, Ofa can kill the user if they have a quirk, draining not only the user's power but also their life and body, deteriorating them until death. Senku, yes, that's how the fourth holder died according to the records. I still remember how Katsuki and Asta vomited after seeing the autopsy images. Rookies. Izuku, that's why, if we can create something that can consume besides the quirk or life, we could get the best out of the power without killing Kirishima. Shoto, how are we going to do that? At some point, he got lost in so many words. Senku, it won't be easy, but I'll try. He turned to look at a very confused Kirishima, who didn't understand anything. We'll save you, unbreakable wall. End of the video. Aizawa, what was that supposed to be? Surprise didn't take long to arrive, they didn't understand what they were talking about. Kirishima, hey, that wasn't supposed to be shown, he said angrily, ignoring the teacher. Katsuki, it was time for them to know. The redhead, with some nervousness, turned and looked at the panicked looks of his classmates. Toru, you. Kirishima-kun, are you going to die? She spoke with fear, just thinking that her romantic interest would die hurt her. Shoto, he won't, Senku will make sure it doesn't happen. He assured the frightened Toru, who just approached to hug Kirishima. Aizawa, don't ignore me, he shouted, getting the attention of the three idiots, what did you mean when you said that about the power? Katsuki, well, the redhead silenced him, it wasn't supposed to be known, get your greasy hand off my face. He threw an explosion, and the redhead backed off a bit. Kirishima, but, the bicolor stopped him, bro. Shoto, it's time you know, you've been hurting yourself by not saying what's happening. That's why Aizawa sensei can't train you properly. Sighing, the redhead accepted his defeat. Katsuki, shitty hair possesses a second quirk inherited from All Might. The teacher looked at him demanding answers. Aizawa, what do you mean? The class fell silent, waiting for answers. Kirishima, All Might's quirk is known as one for all and it's a power passed down from generation to generation like a torch of power given to a successor. He explained, and the teacher just looked at him asking him to continue, All Might gave me one for all after Izu bro rejected the power. Uraka, Midoriya kun was the one they were going to give it to? The redhead nodded, still remembering that afternoon well. Kirishima, yes. According to what Izu bro told me, All Might found him saving someone close to him and didn't hesitate to offer Ofa. He rejected it because he didn't need an enhancer to be a good hero. Toru, and why did you take it? Kirishima, Izu bro recommended me, he said it was perfect for having the power, great potential, and valor as a hero. And I accepted it, he admitted calmly, not regretting it. Aizawa, what do you mean by Kirishima will die? The atmosphere became tense, and the three weren't sure if they should speak. Kirishima, we found out two years ago that Ofa can kill its host after using it caused me intense pain and my skin began to peel off. Aizawa, why didn't you inform me about this? He shouted, it was unpleasant that they hid something like this from him. Kirishima, All Might said it was super secret, and no one should know, even Izu bro had trouble for telling Baku bro and Toto bro. Aizawa's gaze was strong. Aizawa, 
you made a very grave mistake by hiding this from me, he shouted at the three, who remained in their places seriously, but the main problem is all might and his stupidity. Stay here. The teacher left angrily towards the teacher's lounge, this wouldn't end well. Senku, yeah, that's how the fourth guy with the power died, as per the records. I remember how Katsuki and Asta puked when they saw the autopsy pics. Rookies. Izuku, that's why, if we can make something that can use power without hurting Kirishima, it would be great. Shoto, how do we do that? He got lost in the conversation at some point. Senku, it won't be easy, but I'll try. He looked at Kirishima, who was confused, we'll save you, unbreakable wall. End of the video. Aizawa, what was that? Surprise came quickly, they didn't get what they were talking about. Kirishima, hey, that wasn't supposed to be shown, he was angry, ignoring the teacher. Katsuki, it was time for them to know. He turned nervously, looking at his classmates' panicked faces. Toru, Kirishima-kun, are you gonna die? She spoke with fear, just thinking about Kirishima dying hurt her. Shoto, he won't, Senku will make sure it doesn't happen. He assured Toru, who hugged Kirishima. Aizawa, don't ignore me, he shouted, getting the attention of the three, what did you mean about the power? Katsuki, well, Kirishima silenced him, it wasn't supposed to be known, get your hand off my face. He exploded, and Kirishima backed off a bit. Kirishima, but, Shoto stopped him, bro. Shoto, it's time you know, you've been hurting yourself by not saying what's happening. That's why Aizawa sensei can't train you properly. Sighing, Kirishima accepted his defeat. Katsuki, shitty hair has a second power from All Might. The teacher demanded answers. Aizawa, what do you mean? The class waited for answers. Kirishima, All Might's power is called one for all, passed down from one hero to the next. He explained, and the teacher asked him to continue, All Might gave me one for all after Izu bro rejected it. Uraka, Midoriya kun was the one they were gonna give it to? Kirishima nodded, recalling that afternoon. Kirishima, yes. All Might offered it to him, but he rejected it. He didn't need it to be a good hero. Toru, and why did you take it? Kirishima, Izu bro recommended me, he said it was perfect for having power, potential, and valor as a hero. And I accepted it, he admitted calmly, not regretting it. Aizawa, why will Kirishima die? The atmosphere got tense, and the three weren't sure if they should speak. Kirishima, two years ago, we found out using Ofa can kill its host. It caused me intense pain, and my skin started peeling off. Aizawa, why didn't you tell me? He shouted, it wasn't cool they hid this from him. Kirishima, All Might said it was super secret, even Izu bro got in trouble for telling Bakugo and Todoroki. Aizawa's gaze was strong. Aizawa, you made a big mistake hiding this from me, he scolded the three, who stayed put seriously, but the main issue is All Might and his stupidity. Stay here. The teacher left angrily, this wouldn't end well. 